The last video that we have for you today is motif uh, analysis with MEME. So MEME is a whole, has a whole suite of programs that um, do all sorts of different things. So MEME and DREAM uh, are in GLAM2 as well as MEME Chip are, are motif finders. Um, MEME being the oldest and um, it's really good at doing uh, long mo motifs while DREAM is good at shorter ones. And MEME actually runs both programs to get the, the MEME Chip, sorry, runs both programs in order to get the, the biggest overview. And then runs these motifs into um, a lot of other software available, um, which we will go over a couple of them later. Okay, so how does meme work? So what it, first of all, what is motif? So a motif is a sequence pattern that occurs repeatedly in a group of related protein or DNA sequences. In our case, our DNA sequences are related by the fact that um, the same binding protein is, is binding to these sequences, and so we're looking for motifs that are enriched that that transcription factor binds. Uh, but this could also be used for other um, related DNA sequences. Uh, MEME represents uh, motifs in a position-dependent letter probability matrix, um, which describes the probability of each possible letter at each position in the pattern, and you'll see an example of this later. Um, MEME takes as input a group of DNA or protein sequences and outputs many, as many motifs as are requested. In our case, we're going to give it a group of DNA sequences, and this DNA sequences are going to come from our peaks. So we're going to give it the DNA sequences under our peaks as called by MAX. And then MEME uses statistical modeling techniques to choose the best width number of occurrences and description of each motif. So MEME has several different programs within it. Um, MEME chip is maybe the broadest, um, but also the most time consuming. So MEME chip runs both MEME and DREAM. MEME is its original. It's really good at finding wide motifs, um, but DREAM is much better at finding short motifs. And so if you know it's, it'd be nice to know going in which you expect if you expect a wide motif or a shorter motif. Um, with MEME, you can also change your expected motif size, and I believe you can do the same with DREAM, but they run essentially the same. So what MEME chip does is it just runs both of the programs. It will take longer because you're running two programs instead of one, but it, um, it will also run other analysis tools simultaneously or on the same data set, such as MAST or other tools within the meme suite. However, for the, for the purposes of this demonstration, we're just going to run meme. Once you know how to run one of them, it's basically the same or easy to figure out to run the rest. Okay, so what about running meme or dream? So it takes as input a FASTA file of sequences. This is somewhat problematic because our output from Max is actually a bed file, which doesn't contain any sequence. It's not a list of sequences. And so the first thing that we need to do is convert our bed file into a FASTA file that meme can read. And we'll go over that in the terminal. And what it outputs is uh, several logos, however many you ask it to, representing your motifs. So this is that um, PSSM, that position matrix that I mentioned before. So at every place in this um, in this uh, motif, there's some information content about the nucleotides that most commonly occur there. The bigger the letter, the more commonly you see that, that nucleotide. So in this case, this G is pretty much the only, you almost always see G in position eight of this um, motif and you never see anything else. Whereas other positions, such as 10, you see a mix of A, T, and C. It also outputs the reverse complement of your logo. So don't be discouraged if when you look at a logo, it's actually not the right one, because it might just be the reverse complement. And so they also those logos are also contained. Um, probably the most important file, I would say, is this meme.html file. So this is a summary of that meme run. Uh, that you can look at with Firefox 
and it also allows you to move forward with other analysis when you're doing it on your own computer. That move forward doesn't really work on the Ikeys. There's also this text file which contains all the same information as the logos in the me file, but it's a, it's a much more dense read, but doesn't take up too much space, doesn't require Firefox to view it. So one of the first things you have to do is make a FASTA file of the sequences. So Max outputs a bed file of peak locations. You can then use bed tools and a specific tool called FASTA from bed to make a FASTA file of the peak conditions. And in order to do this, you give it the locations, which is the bed file, the locations of your peak. But then you also have to get it, give it a genome to pull these the sequence from based on that location. So be sure to give it the same genome that you used for aligning your sequences. Okay, so how do you run meme? Let's go to the terminal. Okay, so how do we run meme in the terminal? Um, so first, let's go ahead and um, look at the, the functions of meme. So we can go ahead and, and um, look for meme. So all of our programs are stored in opt, and then I look for meme, and then its program list is within bin. So now I can look in bin, and I, I do want to list all these possibilities so you can just see how many different programs are in the meme suite. So these are all the different programs of mean, meme sweep, uh, suite, sorry. And um, in some cases, some of these programs are just run by programs such as meme. So meme can use meme to images or meme to meme that sort of thing. Um, so you won't necessarily use them, but meme can use them. So you will use things like meme or um, meme chip or dream. These might be things you're interested in. Another good program to learn how to use or to look at is mast. Okay, so then now let's do this again, and now let's look at the options for, for meme. So let's go meme-h. It's going to bring up the help options. It has a really long, as you can see, help page, so we're just going to look at the top of it. So basically all you have to give meme is the data set, and then unlike most other programs, the arguments go after the data set rather than before the data set, which is different from like Bowtie and everything else that we've used. So in this case, the data set is a file containing FASTA format sequences. So in a second we'll go over uh, how to make a FASTA file format from your, your bed file. Okay, a-h is just to print this message. Um, another option you're probably going to want to use is dash o, and that's going to give it an output directory to put the files in. Um, say you've run this a couple of times, if you're not worried about it writing over, you could do oc, but if uh, I suggest always doing dash o, and manually deleting the output file first. Um, so that way you, the program's not writing over something you actually do want, so you're sure that it's going to, it'll stop otherwise if that, that folder already exists. Okay? Um, you can do dash text if you want the output in text format. Right now it's an HTML, so we'll look at what that looks like, and we're going to go ahead and keep it at that. Um, so you could tell it to do DNA or protein, it will automatically detect it otherwise. Um, but if you're concerned, you can always, or if it's not working properly, you can always um, do dash DNA. Uh, other stuff you might be interested in is N motifs, which is the maximum number of motifs it will find. It defaults to three. You can give it more, you can give it less, uh, depending on how many sites you're looking for. Um, And then these other options about the number of sites is going to um, change how it runs and how the number of sites it, it finds to, to, to in order to detect a motif, how many things it uses. Um, other settings that might be important are motif width or minimum motif width or maximum motif width. Uh, so sometimes, so it's going to, it sort of overfits and automatically tries for, for longer motifs, especially meme does this. So you can knock the size down and it might do a better job if meme's not recovering what you believe to be the, the <clears throat> binding motif. Okay, and then, um, let's see. And then, so after this, if you so desire, you can go ahead and read through all 
the, the basically a different manual that's telling you about uh, about me, but we're not going to do that today. The other setting that we're going to be interested in is dash p. We want to use parallel processors so that this goes more quickly. Okay. So like I mentioned, the first thing we have to do is take our um, our bed file that we got from Max, and let's just go ahead and look at that bed file again. So if I go max out, I can go ahead and look at that bed file. The peaks dot bed. Okay, so this is what the bed file looked at. It was a list of locations. And so if we give up this program called Bed Tools a FASTA file containing um, the information in the sequence, the actual sequence themselves, then uh, the, the program bed tools will produce a FASTA from this. And I can show you what the FASTA looks like because I've already made it here. So it's just peaks at FASTA. And you can see it'll tell, say the, the basically the location of the peak and then it pulled out the sequence for that. So now this is a FASTA file containing uh, the sequence underneath every peak that was called by Max. So if we want to, so how, how did I make that file? Let me show you. I um, Okay. So I used this program called, it's in part of the Bed Tools package is called FASTA from Bed. What's the nice thing about these Bed Tool packages? They are really obviously named. So this one is obviously, I want to make a FASTA from a bed file. So I give it the input file, which is the FASTA, so that's FN, um, and that's the human genome, all chromosomes, um, and all sequence dot FASTA. And then I give it the dash bed for the bed file, and so I, I link that to that ctcfpeaks.bed file that I made. And then finally I give it the output file name. So I just want it to be that same file name .fasta. If we go, we can look at all the other, bed tools also has a ton of different options. So yeah, um, a bunch of different really cool tools in here. Intersect bed will tell you where all of your aligned reads are over a certain bed file or GTF file that you want to count. It's a good for, it's a good counting one. Um, bed to BAM, so you can, can just convert between different files, BAM to bed. These are all, this is a really good general toolbox to, to learn how to, to use some of these programs. Okay. So here we are, we are going to briefly show how we, we are uh, executing MIM, uh, of course through a job via the Slurm job manager just like we, we've been using so far. Um, and just like uh, like like the other Slurm jobs, jobs that you've seen, you know, we have the shell declaration. Um, in this case, we are going to use multi-threading. Uh, this, this mean process is going to use 30, 32 cores, so 32 different CPUs, which we also specify in the, in the requirements for the job. Uh, we have a, a slightly longer wall time because you know sometimes this this can be a you know pretty time consuming process. Uh, so we give it three hours for this particular transcription factor. Here we're looking at CTCF, and uh, fortunately, like many other bioinformatics tools in the cluster, it's it's available via a module that we can load. So in this case, we can load the meme module, which is using using version four point twelve point zero. And the way we call it is uh, by specifying the path to the FASTA file uh, for that particular that particular uh, chromosome. And we are using a max size argument, which is different than the default. I think the default is uh, 100,000, so we're using an, an order of magnitude larger than that. Um, and we are using 32 different cores to, to you know, speed up processing. And we will send the output to the CTCF uh, meme out directory, and now we will we will see what's the you know the the, the resulting output of the meme program. 
So now let's go to that output directory. So what um, Beam outputs is it outputs basically three file types. It, your logos, here it only found two logos. It automatically decided how many it was going to find. Or sorry, it only found one logo. It automatically decided it was only going to find one, and that was the one it found. Um, it gives you an HTML file and then a text file, which basically lists the information of the logos and the, and the HTML file, but in a much longer, much longer format. Um, so if you want to look at these files, you, have, you do display, and it's going to pull up in a separate window through X windows. And so here is the logo that it found. Because I didn't, you know, limit the length, it determined how long of a logo it wanted to find. Um, and if we were to go and like blast this logo, we would find that this is in fact the CTCF um, binding site, which is really great that we were able to recover that. But don't be discouraged if the first time you look at this, you don't recover it because it could be that it just found the reverse complement. So you can also go back and look at it. Also gives you the reverse complement of the logo. So it depends just on how websites listed or how other people have found the logo. Oops. Try that again. Okay, and so this is now just the reversed complement of the logo, which is almost the same. <laughs> so obviously, whatever CTCF binds, it's probably palindromic. Okay, so what about this HTML file? I think this lists the um, the most amount of information you can get. So to, do, to look at the HTML file, you do Firefox and then meme.html. So let's pull this up. Okay, so here's going to list the motif it found. And of all the sites that we put into it, it this is the p-value or the IBI. I believe this is the p-value, so it's not corrected for number of tests, um, like a q-value would be. And this value here is the number of sites. So of all the sites that we gave it, 812 contained that motif. And if we scroll down, um, it lists its width of 20. Um, so you can, it, on your own computer, not through the wikis, can click on these and do further analysis with the information you gave it. So MASS is going to scan sequence databases for best match for each, each sequence. FEMO um, will look for this motif in other databases. TomTom Tom is going to look at known motifs for this, this, um, this given motif, which I think is a, a fun one to do. And then underneath that, this is just a list of all the peaks that we gave it. And it's showing here where it's found in that peak, that motif. So this, it's this part of the sequence that they're using to to find that motif. Um, and you can, what's great about this is you can take and you know print out part of this, which gives you some of your information, like the p values and that sort of thing. Um, that information is also listed on the in the text file. Okay. So one more thing is, if you want to learn more about your motif, what can we do? And so these are some things that I mentioned just a second ago. But you can use TomTom, Tom, which is a part of the suite as well, to compare an output motif to a database of known motifs. Mass, which I really like, you can search your sequences or other sequencing databases for the occurrences of this motif. And then GOMO, which is you could use the gene ontology for motifs, so it'll assign target genes for the um, motif you gave it and then it will look for genes that are regulated by that motif.